Hello and welcome to this bonus episode of the Scarf Bagara War, um, your award nominated podcast in the Northwest Football Awards. Um, that's going to come soon, so hopefully we can bag a win, although we are up against Man City. It never ends well for us. Um, so today I'm delighted to be joined by Lee from the Brunton Bugle, who's a Carlisle United fan. Um, and obviously we're playing them on Tuesday, so we'll get a bit of a preview on that uh, with Lee. Lee, how's it going, mate? You okay? I'm not too bad, thanks. I'm still absolutely raging after our game yesterday in the uh, appalling referee display by Mr Thomas Parsons, who you guys may remember from the National League last season. He refereed a few games at that level. Uh, how on earth he's got to the EFL level, I'll never know because he was that bad. And the thing is, he sent one of our players off and that was a that was the one thing he got right in the whole game. So there you go. <laughs> so I'm a little bit saving, saving about that. But actually, it, weirdly, not angry about the performance. We were, we were fantastic against, you know, against 11 men with 10 men. So, yeah, at the moment, we're very encouraged up in Carlisle, I think it's fair to say. Nice, nice. Well, let's let's talk about that then. So, how's your season gone so far? I know you're you're currently sat sort of mid top, mid of the, mid of the top table, you know, mid mid at the top kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah t- talk us through how it's gone so far for you. We've exceeded expectations and definitely exceeded by the fact that we've had ten players out injured pretty much since the start of the season. Some players have come back and then another player's got injured, but to be where we are. We've we've basically had to have a YTS player on the bench, I think, in pretty much every one of the last seven or eight games, something like that. And the way people are performing is, is brilliant. And that's all down to one man, Paul Simpson. You know, if that's guy fans, I'm sure you guys remember him for his brief spell in charge of you. But he he's been a miracle worker since he came back in February. We were a mess at that point. We were heading back towards the National League. We you know, we we lost three 0 to Swindon and one of our former players, Harry McCurdy, had an absolute blinder there. He's a horrible little piece of work to put it nicely yeah. he enjoyed it he's now very much lauded by the Carlisle fans for the fact that he's the man who got Keith Millen sacked and as a result Paul Simpson came back because he performed the miracle to turn around what looked like a ragtag bunch of players into what looked like a coherent team towards the end of last season and Simo has kept a, a, a decent chunk of that squad together he hasn't really looked to clear the moment this summer he signed really well obviously we signed Ben Barkley from online from you guys and that's one of those ones where you know that's just a clever bit of thinking rather than just going after some young lad at a championship level who's barely played a game before, we've looked to think, well, he's available. Let's get him in. And the work he's done is has been brilliant. Like I said, the, the fact that we've been, having all these players injured, we've only lost two games and they've been against the top two, if I'm right. I think Stephen is still second now, I think. Yeah. Leighton Orient and Stephen is the two we've lost to, basically. And all the rest, we are one or The biggest problem is we've drawn too many games, but with the players we've had out injured, yeah, we're, the expectation from all the preview pods and things like that was 18th, 19th, similar to where we finished last season. Our fans initially in pre-season were like, well, we could finish about 12th, 13th, mid-table. That that would be a good good season, good good, good campaign. As it is, we're in 7th and you know, we're, we're not too far off the top three. And if we can get players back fit, we really think we could be right up there. So Paul Simpson then, is this, obviously he managed us for a bit and people have their own opinion on that um, and how he did for us. Um, is it is it a case? Is it like Jim Gannon for us? It just it's just meant to be. Every time he comes in, he's because it, is it his second spell? Is it? It might even be more than that. Second spell. It's his second spell as manager. Um, he's a Carlisle lad. That's that's one of the, the first things. He, he's, he's actually from Carlisle. He came right. back to us as a player originally after he'd been sacked at Rochdale. His first managerial job and took over. But we did get relegated to the National League under him. It should be noted. But he got us straight back up and then promoted again. The season after, as as, yeah. as League Two uh, champions, um, he's a much he's a different coach to what he was then. He, he's much more, you know, he's he's gone away and he's done the hard yards. He's he's worked in the FA setup. He's done coaching, I think, in Portugal for a bit as well. He, he yeah, it just fits. He gets the club. He gets the fact that it's more than just being the manager of the team on the, the Saturday. He gets the fact that we need to be a big part of the community as well, especially because we don't. Our budget is probably about in the bottom six. They reckon that that, that right. they get they get the figures of as to exactly what you know they don't get told exact amounts, but they get told where people play team stand with budget wise, and we apparently are near enough in the bottom six for budget. So the fact that he's worked really hard to bring in players over the summer and get us to where we are, and actually I, I probably should give a bit of credit to Greg Abbott as well, who's our head of recruitment. Now he's a former manager of ours as well. He came back in the summer to take on that role of head of recruitment under Simo. And he's done really well. Some of the plays he's brought in have been fantastic as well. So 
yeah, for Simmer, he just fits. He he just is the right man for the job. And he came in on a temporary deal to the end of the season last summer. And there was a fear of like, oh, bigger clubs are going to sniff around now. They're going to come in for him. In the end, we've got him tied down to a three-year deal. And that three-year deal is a big thing because that tells you, right, the club are looking and thinking long-term here, we can actually build something. Let's not rush here. Let's not do a two-year deal and be panicking and thinking we're going to sack him after a season. It puts a bit of pressure on us to stand by him, which really does help. Yeah, it's worth noting as well. I think when you won the League Two that year, it was you got a nil-nil draw away at Edgeley Park on the last day. A very convenient nil-nil draw that wasn't it? Yes, it was convenient <laughs> for us anyway. Yeah. Well, so, well, well, we we, already, we needed a po- basically we needed a point to officially secure the title. Otherwise, Northampton could, I think Northampton could have won it with an eighteen-goal swing. So right. never been, it was never going to happen. So we didn't need to really. <laughs> Go for a win, but we kind of like eased off. Simo actually played in that game, funny enough. That was his last ever football league appearance. That right. so, uh, so there you go. But yeah, it's um, yeah that 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 was uh, one of the games of that season. Yeah, yeah. I remember I remember your sellout your sellout away end, and we were all listening to radios because it was the days just just before just before mobiles yeah. took off. You know, like apps yeah. and stuff. Uh, God, showing me age now. Uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about some of the players that you've got then, so, yes. specifically the X players, uh, mm-hmm. uh, X rated, I guess. So Christian Dennis, Ben Barkley, Huntington. Huntington came to us. I think he was on loan at our place. Very yeah. promising centre half at the time. Remember him playing against Leeds, but yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's the, 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 I mean, they're all Dennis and Huntington. They're, they're really good, experienced players now, aren't yeah. they? Huntington coming in, that was, I think that's the signing that's taken us from being, okay, we probably will be a good mid-table side to one that's like, right, we can challenge for promotion potentially, at least for the playoffs, because he's his his know-how and announce, you can see it every game. Because when he first came in, he had, he'd not played, I think he'd played one game in the last 18 months, something like that, because of Preston, he was basically, he's played in the reserves, but he wasn't playing first team games. So it was taking a bit of time to get him up to fitness before. He had to come in a bit earlier than we thought because we've got a couple of injuries in defence. And he's had to basically build his fitness up in the team. Uh, well, what I think about 10 games in now, and he's outstanding. He wins everything in the air. He's, he's those clever little, like, when when, when a attacker's going for the head and he's going up for it, just a little slight nudge in the back. Nothing enough to get give away a free kick, but yeah. knowing what he can get away with. And he he's not even been captain because we've got two other lads who are captains and they do a perfectly good job. But he he leads like a captain, even though he isn't. He, he is... His ability on the ball as well, actually, that's, that's something we noticed in recent games. He, he's very good on the ball and he can he can spray the ball out to work because we play with two wing backs and they get very high at the pitch and he can pick them out really perfectly with crosses. So, yeah, he's 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 been fantastic. Christian, proper fox in the box. He likes to wind up, as I'm sure you've probably seen when he was with you guys. He, yeah. he certainly enjoys winding up the fans. Um, he, um, for us, he's been fantastic. It, you know, he's not the quickest. I think anyone would tell you that. He's not really got any pace. He's very quick over a couple of yards which is what you need to be to be that kind of player. And he holds the ball up fairly well, actually, to be fair. And he had that purple patch at the start of the season. He's not, not scored for a few games now, but he's been in and out with an injury over the last couple of weeks. But yeah, he's he's been fantastic this season. And last season, he was a good, solid performer. This season, he's been near enough undroppable, to be honest, the way he's been playing. He's been he's been that good. Um, He's been really good. Ben Barkley's been very unlucky with injuries, really, because he first came in. He was playing on the right side of our back three of centre-backs. And we were really impressed how good he was on the ball. He was, he was very good in the air. He's a good, big, tall lad. But he's very calm on the ball, picks out a pass every time, really good. And then he rolled his ankle. I can't remember if he rolled his ankle in the game against Shrewsbury in the Cup or it was in a training incident, I think. But he rolled his ankle and he was out then for about eight weeks, I think it was. And he's only just come back. And then he was supposed to play in the trophy game against Barrow last week. And then in the last bit of the training session before that, he did his ankle again. <laughs> they, they think it's only maybe a couple of weeks this time, but it's just frustrating, really, that that's happened. But yeah, he he looks a great signing. Like I said, all our fans are looking, and thinking, well, Stockport down, you know, struggling to get themselves away from the bottom, and we expect them to be higher up come the end of the season. But it's like, why have they let Barkley go? But as I think we've discussed before on my own pod, you were saying that it's just one of those ones where, you know, he's probably too expensive to actually sell because his, his wage is so big. So yep. load him out to another club, probably the only way forward. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Who uh, who else should we be looking out for? Just, in fact, just before we, we go on to that, yeah. if, if Christine Dennis scores in the Cheedland, he's the kind of player that would cup his ear, isn't he? 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. He, did it. Guess, he scored against Gr- now. He had a loan spell at Grimsby a couple of years ago. He only scored one goal in 13 games. So when he scored against them the other night when we won 2-1 there. And yeah, he milked it. He 100% yeah. milked it. He'll milk it if someone else scores, to be honest. He's not that first, <laughs> not first to whoever he does it. He's, he's, he's a good lad. He's a good character. And I think, yeah, he, he, he's become really popular with the fans definitely oh, i love it i love it so who else uh who else are we looking out for then on tuesday <sighs> right well let's just go through some positions so goalkeeper big thomas holy he's the tallest player in the football league six foot nine. Oh, he's right. a big fella <laughs> the, the other week we played it at mansfield town and there was a shot that hit the side stanchion thing and it was noticed when that happened that the net had come loose and they couldn't get it back on so they were like oh we'll get some black gaffer tape and do it up till half time so we can fix it properly and they come on with this black gaffer tape and they were basically saying, oh, we're going to have to go and get a ladder now. And then Tom said, no, just give it to me. And he literally, <laughs> he didn't have even have to stand on his top, on his uh, tiptoes. And he was just standing there wrapping it around the thing, doing the DIY. So, so yeah, he, he's been quite impressive. He, I mean, he didn't have the greatest game against Orion, but, you know, as a big lad, you'd expect he claims pretty much every cross you out there. So it's, there's no issues there. In defence, obviously, you mentioned Huntington and, um, and Barkley. At wing back, we've got a young lad on loan called Finn Back. He's on loan from Nottingham Forest. Uh, the name surname Back might be fil- familiar from a sporting viewpoint because his dad is Neil Back, who was uh, who played in the Rugby Union uh, World Cup winning team in two thousand three. Right. Yeah, so yeah. He, he he's become a Cal United fan as Neil. He, he's tweeting us every game. He's got like a because he's one of these rare things you see a blue tick Twitter account tweeting about the things you, you actually notice it. So every game he's tweeting, saying, "Come on, Finn, come on, lads," and stuff like that. And he's been fantastic. He's only nineteen. He played five games for. Um, Forest last season in the championship and he's got a big future ahead of him definitely he gets up and down the pitch so much the only thing missing at the moment he's, he probably should have scored a goal by now he's got in some good positions to do that but yeah he will get up and down that pitch all all afternoon I've got, I've got, I kind of want to move to midfield but I've got to mention big John Mellish in defence for us as well he's a uh, yeah an enigma I think is the way I describe him because he <laughs> first came in as a you, you might you may vaguely remember he was at Gateshead and he won young uh, you, you might have been nationally northern, actually. I don't know, but um, he won the young conference player of the year the, the summer before we signed him. Um, he came in as a defender, didn't really play too much. And then Chris Beach came in as manager. And after a few training sessions, he said, You're going to be in midfield. I'm going to play in midfield. Played him in midfield. He scored 17 goals in a season from midfield. But then, nice. second season was struggling a little bit to get as many goals. Uh, Keith Millen actually tried playing him up front for a bit because we were struggling for strikers. And then Simo came back and said, no, you're a centre-back. You go back to centre-back. And he's been fantastic on the left side of the back. For he Again, he gets up and down the pitch so much and he, his energy is in, incredible. So, But it's a midfield. Owen Moxon. Now, Owen Moxon, we signed in the summer from Annan Athletic in Scotland. So just over the border. It's about eight miles over the border from, from mm. Carlisle in Scotland in Scottish League Two. He was in the Scottish League Two team of the season. He was, I think he was up for League Two player of the year. I think he came third. Um, he actually started out in our academy, but was let go at the age of 16. And he spent the last eight years in Scotland working, you know, he went to Queen and South there to drop down to Annan. And has worked his way back. And our former player, Peter Murphy, his manager there, when Simo arrived, contacted him and said, you need to come and watch this lad because we're not going to be able to keep him. And I'd rather you got him for Carlisle than him, you know, someone else getting you think, oh, we've missed out on him. And he came and basically we signed him this summer. And we thought, oh, he'll take a bit of time to acclimatise. He hasn't had to take time at all. He's been fantastic. He he looks like he's been playing at this level for years. He had to go off with some stitches in his head against uh, Orient at the weekend. But possibly, I think he should be okay for, for this game. Um, and yeah, I can't really name anyone else in attack because the problem is, Jack Stretton, who's looked really good on loan from Derby. Jack Stretton's the one who was on loan with you guys. I yeah, completely forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, he, he was. He took his time to settle, but the last three or four games, he's been fantastic, really good. And then he rolled his ankle against Barrow. So he's out for a couple of weeks. So he probably won't feature in this game, I don't think. Ryan Edmondson scored his first league off of the weekend. He got himself sent off. So he's going to miss this game with a free game ban. Amari Patrick's out until Christmas with a hamstring injury, unfortunately. Uh Toby Show Silver's just come back from injury, but I think he's you'll probably see 10, 15 minutes of him at the most because he just isn't fit. So Dennis is basically he's going to start an attack. That's our only option. Jordan Gibson will play just off him, I think. And he again, he's another bit of an enigma. He, he's he's got so much ability, but his decision making occasionally is just not quite there. And if he can get that right, he will be a player who'll play at a high level. I've absolutely no doubt about that. So, so yeah, we've got really good players all over the pitch. It, 
and Simo signs so well. And the great thing is that they're all good characters as well, because sometimes you get them and they they look like they don't want to be there. And you think to yourself, you because you when you come to Carlisle, it's a long way to come, and you've got to be up for it and got be ready to enjoy it. You know, we've had quite often if you get players from a long distance, they're not really up for that. They're not up to it. I yeah. mean, rare example of that is someone like Jabo Ibiri, again, another player who played for you for a bit. Yeah. Brilliant character, and he really got into it when he had his couple of years with us. So, so yeah, it, uh, we've got strength all over the pitch. It, it, it's really encouraging. Our biggest problem at the moment is depth on the bench. We, we're just struggling to get players fit. That's where we've got a real problem. Like I said, 10 players out at the moment, I think it is. So get them fit. I, I really think we can challenge for a playoff space at least. Sounds good. Good stuff. Okay. Mm. Um, finally, yeah. predictions then. For Tuesday, we've just done them on your pod. Yeah, you, you, what, what yeah. are you thinking? I'm going to be a bit conservative on this one because we're struggling a bit with the amount of options we've got up top. Our, our sub striker is probably going to be a seven, an 18 year old who's only made one first team appearance. Um, I'm going to go for a one one draw. I think Christian Dennis will get the goal for us, obviously. In the <laughs> cheat lane, yeah. yeah, definitely, hundred <laughs> percent. He's going to do that. But there you go. Brilliant. Right. Lee, thank you so much for your time. No problem at all. A little preview for us. Uh, just yes. before you just before you go, just to say to everybody, um, if you do like this, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, all those things, please do rate us, review us, because it does help us grow uh, the podcast and grow the channel. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheers, Lee. And um, yes. are you coming Are you coming up for the uh, down for the match? I am. I live in Liverpool. So it's, oh, it's a nice short across. journey for me. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I've got to pick up a mate in Runcorn who's coming to the game as well. Grab him and then we'll we'll drive over basically. And uh, we're going to have to work out where it's parked because I've never come on there by car before. I've always I've always come by train. So it's a, won't be able to have a drink, unfortunately. But yeah, hopefully it'll be a good game at least. Right. I'll message you some places to park <laughs> afterwards. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. Um, if you do want to know more about the Brunt and Bugle, they are well. Just just Google Brunt and Bugle, and you can get on them on Acast and and all book all good podcast players, and through the Fan Hub app as well. So if you go to the opposition feed on the Fan Fan Hub app, they are there. So yeah, brilliant stuff. Thank you for your time, Lee. Really Cheers. appreciate it. Cheers.